I meet these guys who offer me an opportunity to make money same day. I drove a car over a border and I got caught and it ended up being 6.2 kilos of heroin while having commercials, music videos, big billboards in Times Square simultaneously. And I'm like, what the fuck did I just do? So I'm in prison serving a 12 year sentence and I got out in two and a half years, but how did I get out, Andre? Ask me. Karen. There's several ways you could get out. You can be an informant and you can snitch on somebody or a way I discovered. Then losing my freedom, I discovered my freedom. So nobody can take away what only you can give to yourself. You don't have to have gone to prison like I did to be in prison inside of that job, inside of money, inside of sex. That is prison, my friend. And I figured out a magic formula. Change your mindset, change your life. Hello, beautiful beings. Welcome back to the Know Thyself podcast, where every single week we get the honor and privilege to sit down with a brilliant mind and open heart and to see what we can learn from the lessons that they've learned in their life to help us come back home into ourselves, know us, know ourselves deeper, and live a more self-realized, self-actualized life. Today, my guest is an exquisite human being. His name is Garen Jones. He's a dear friend of mine. He is a transformational coach a world-renowned speaker, travels all around the world helping activate people into their fullest expression, healing their inner child, healing their inner artist. He is somebody who is an author of a book called Change Your Mindset, Change Your Life. And he has one of the most profound rags to riches stories and stories period that I've ever come across in my life. It's so inspiring to see what this man has gone from homelessness to various different hardships in his life, to uh, taking the fruit of those experiences and now sharing them in a way that can really support people on their path of awakening and self-actualization. And above all else, he's just somebody that I really dearly hold as a dear friend of mine, somebody who is not just living a successful life externally, but also very internally in his vibrancy that he holds and has a blast while doing it. So, <laughs> Garen, thanks for coming, bro. <laughs> bro, I was being so present with every single word that you were saying. And I just want to say thank you for seeing me. Mm. If you spot it, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> so good, man. Well, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. We just had a powerful night last night, which we can go to at some point, uh, this men's group mastermind that we did. And so many beautiful insights, so many beautiful moments, and getting to know you over the past couple of years um, through community and seeing your growth and your evolution and how you show up in the world and impact is so inspiring. And mm. I think this conversation is going to be really eye-opening for a lot of people just because mm. you're such a powerful orator and speaker of truth and your own experience and toy storyteller. And um, so, yeah, man, let's, let's dive right in. I want to start before we kind of dive into some things within your story, which we have to touch on just because they're so good. Yeah, thank um, you. Most people, when they face hardship in, in their life, Unfortunately, you know, there's there's certain things that you've gone through from homelessness to various different hardships. And I'm just curious, what do you feel like is at the true core essence of why you were able to integrate those and and move past them and become who you are today, where a lot of people get stuck when facing, you know, difficult moments and challenges in their life? Honestly, it's my willingness to get back up. And um, I want to owe a lot of credit to my brother. I had a big brother who was, he weighed a lot more than me and all we did was wrestle every single day and I'd lose every single day. And he was like, get back up, get back up. So my brother, and especially when MMA came out and then we just always wrestling and doing all kinds of things, but he was a much bigger dude. So imagine me 60 pounds and he's 150 pounds and he's just laying on me. So that along with, and I didn't know that that was training me to always just get back up in the face of a giant mountain, you know? So my brother being the giant mountain from when I was a little kid all the way up until uh, graduating high school trained me for my hardships without me even knowing it because I was always getting back up getting back up. My father was murdered when I was 12 years old. I was unconsciously, I just got to find a way to get back up, get back into the flow of things. 
um, you know, my house got broken into and they, they burned down, um, my, my house and my mom didn't have insurance. So we literally lost everything. And I watched my mom get back up. So everybody around me always had this resilience to just keep going. I never heard complaining or why is this happening to me? I heard tears. And then my mom always found a way to get back up. My brother made me get back up when we were fighting. And then when life lifed me, like that, don't you? <laughs> when life lifed me and these hardships would come, I would already domesticated to always get back up. So if I take it all the way back, I know I was a born warrior spirit. I know I was, I know that somewhere in my ancestral lineage was warriors and fighters, but like a whole different caliber of fighter. Um, and my relentlessness to always keep going in the face of anything that shows up, I think is at it's at the the nature and the core of what has me to keep moving forward where most people crumble. Mm. Yeah. Most people get hardened by their hardships. And, you know, there's moments of ups and downs in that process of integration. Um, but you're somebody who is very much in their heart now and is living a beautiful life and has a beautiful family. And uh, the impact that you have is is so inspiring. And what is so powerful is because like these hardships that you have gone through that you just touched on a couple, but I want to dive deeper here. It's uh, it's baffling because if people can hear this and are tuning into this podcast episode, they can see that somebody that had it much worse than me in many different ways in life has achieved and become something that is so inspiring and, and impactful to the world. And that uh, that has so many ripples effects that you can, you know, you don't, you don't even know the amount of people that, that, you know, impact. So let's dive a little bit deeper into a couple parts of your story. So yeah, man, there's, there's been a couple like big boulders, those big yeah. mountains that you spoke mm -hmm. to. Let's dive into one of them a little bit earlier on, um, leading up to that point where you feel like you had this energy as a creative, as a talent, um, somebody who uh, was a leader in many ways, but lost your way in many yeah. times as well through homelessness and other things. So let's mm -hmm. walk us through a little bit of that. Path. Well, that started when I was five. And I remember the exact moment. I'm five years old. It's Christmas holidays. I'm at my Aunt Yvette's house. And there's a bunch of uh, adults there and everybody's drunk. And then there's my women cousin, cousins, my girl cousins. I was raised by all women. And um, they would always do these songs in front of all the families. The kids get in front of the family and it was like a talent show. And I remember in my heart, it was like, go do the Michael Jackson uh, Moonwalker. And that was on MTV at the time. And I was afraid at first. I was like, I'm just going to take myself. I'm going to go express myself the way that I feel called to express myself. And as soon as I started singing and dancing, all those people were like, boo, Garen, you can't sing. You can't dance. And that was like a dagger to my heart. I'm like, what? The people that you're supposed to trust and like who are really supposed to support your dreams. And I didn't, I couldn't articulate this as a five-year-old, but the feeling was just this gut-wrenching, I'm not worthy to, 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 let this out, so what's the point of letting it out? But there was something peculiar that happened that day because even when my dad was sloppy drunk, whatever it was, maybe it was my higher self, maybe it was God, there was something that day that even in the midst of all of his pain, he said, hey, don't tell my son what he can and cannot do. Garen, if you want to sing and dance and you sing and dance, you do what makes you happy. If it makes you happy, then you do it. Don't listen to them. And I never forgot that moment. So the rejection of expression and do what makes you happy were seeds that were planted simultaneously. So my entire life, 
I've gone into do what makes me happy and then being rejected and then pulling back and then finding a way to do what makes me happy and then feeling the energy of somebody trying to take me off stage or steal my ideas or some kind of something. And then it, and then it, it like takes back and it was this constant back and forth and back and forth and back and forth of my, the bigness was me standing in front of my family. The people who I, who I, who are supposed to know, love, and trust, yeah. who I know, love, and trust, and sharing whatever this is inside that wants to come out. And everybody is, boo, Garen, you can't sing. Garen, you can't dance. Garen, you can't sing. But simultaneously, Garen, you do what you love that makes you happy. So my whole life has just been going, poof. That was the origination of all that I've pretty much have ever created. That dance of rejection, pull back, do what I love, put myself out there. Yeah. It's that, it's like that ping pong between these stories of I'm too much and I'm not enough. Mm -hmm. It's being in your expression where you're this limitless, unhinged child that just wants to express and play like we all have this artist and child within us. Yet, unfortunately, the people that we're sometimes surrounded by, surrounded by in our upbringing, in our adolescence, dampen that light. And that light is so bright. It's, it's brighter than a million suns. It's, yeah. It wants to give, it wants to play, it wants to express. And in in the phase where you need this the approval and, and safety for the people around you, you, we take on the beliefs that are given to us. Absolutely. And um, and that has been your journey over the past many, many you know years and decades going on to express yourself in beautiful ways now. But let's talk about fast forwarding a little bit into the, the homelessness chapter yeah. and how that played out. Um, and then a couple more moments after that. Yeah. So I, the homelessness came after... I was in the music industry. I was signed to DTP Def Jam under Ludacris, and I was signed for a specific sound. They were like, we don't want to change anything. Then all of a sudden, I started changing certain things, and certain people took my sound, and I abandoned. There was an energy. There was a specific energy that when I was in this energy, almost, it was like all these people showed up. And then it was almost like somebody heard that sound and was like, well, I'm going to use that sound. And I'm not going to name any names, but it's a very big artist that if you heard their music before my stuff was popping, you wouldn't even know who it was. And then all of a sudden my stuff comes out and then you hear them put out the same, the same kind of music sonically. Well, I was like, well, they're already doing it. And I abandoned whatever that, that chi of energy was. I left that. So when I, when I left that, I ended up leaving. I I I I left DTP. People were like, are you crazy? People would kill to have a record label. I was like, well, I, I I'm dead on the inside right now. And then there was another big name artist who I was in the studio writing with, and I wrote some lyrics and I came up with a specific melody, and then they told me that the song wasn't going to be used. And at this time, I was living in my car, and this was a big break for me. When the song came out, it was the same exact song, same exact lyrics and melodies. Song went number one, record went platinum, and it won a Grammy. So I had to watch that from living in my car. So I said, F music, F all these weirdos. But what I didn't realize, I also said, F my chi, that, pa that capacity to create that there was there was an energy. There was just an energy of who I was being that was drawing the people closer. So when I said F music, I didn't know that I was saying F everything that had to do with creation. Mm. That's when I closed myself out because I felt rejected and I felt taken advantage of, used, and I felt I, there was just this thing. And I left... And I said, well, they can take everything away from me, but they can't take away my car. So 
I stayed in my car one day, turned to five days, turned to seven days, on and off through different girls' couches and houses, sleeping with them and whatnot. It was just like, it was, it, it got, I, I felt so used that I didn't even want to have sex anymore. I was just like, yo, I just want to sleep. Well, the only place I know where I can sleep and nobody will mess with me is my car. Well, one month turned into two and a half years to the point where I was numb with emotions and had all of this talent inside. Energy can't be created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred. I didn't know where to put the energy other than this deepening, dark rejection, guilt, shame, insecure, gossiping, um, just unforgiven, just this, this mute shell of myself, of the bigness that I shut down, shut out, that I would not allow to go through. So what's the point? They're going to take it anyways. What's the point? They're going to steal it anyways. What's the point? They're going to talk about me anyways. What's the point? They're going to kill me anyways. And so the only place where I felt safe enough where nobody could take was a car that I bought with my advance money. And I stayed in that car. All of a sudden, I had parking tickets unpaid. I had speeding tickets unpaid. And they came and took my car. Mm. And I want to share this. My mom who didn't have much money, sent me Western Union and I got my car. So the day I got my car back, somebody broke into my car and they stole my computer. They stole a bunch of things. I'm like, and that's when I wanted to take my life. And it was 3.43 in the morning and I remember it was raining and my window was busted out from them like stealing stuff out of my car inside of the valet at LA Fitness. It was chasing me and I'm in this parking lot on the corner of La Brea and Hollywood in front of the Mail and More in the frozen yogurt place. And for the first time in my life, I cried out instead of saying, what's wrong with me? Why does this keep happening to me? Why am I still broke? When is it ever going to happen? I cried out and said and yelled what I wanted. Okay. I'm tired of fighting. I don't want to fight anymore. I want to be healthy. I want to be happy. I want to be surrounded by nothing but positive people. I just want to inspire people. And I want to make a bunch of money. But I want the money to represent something that I passionately believe in that I would do for free. Just show me a sign. Show me a sign. Show me a sign. And to close, a week later, I'm at a gas station and a homeless guy asked me for money. And I said, you have more money than me because he had a wad of money. And he said, change your mindset, change your life. And I don't know what it was about those words, but it was the energy behind it that like created this conscious interrupt and made me think about my entire life. Is my life the way that it is because the way that I've been thinking? Change your mindset, change it. So if I do different with the same circumstance, my life will change. Well, different was starting to learn to be healthy. Different was surrounding myself around knucklehead friends uh, that gossiped all the time and then surrounding myself around a different environment. That's So I, I immersed myself inside the health and wellness community and they were talking about personal growth, taking over the world. The, the language was different. And I, I was like, I've never heard this before, but something is telling me to go back. Yeah. Change your mindset, change your life. Yeah. So I staged myself outside of the normal habitual nature of which I had been living my whole life. And now it's 11 years later and I'm 11 years removed and my life is a direct flip from being $200,000 in debt, daughter pretty much disowned me, mom dying in the hospital, living in my car. Now I own several cars, retired my mom, best-selling author, impacting millions, multi-millionaire in several different companies. It's a direct flip. And so now we're here in this chair. Mm -hmm. 
Now here we are. I know it's a lot to unpack, but no, it's it's beautiful. Let's keep going, man, because the it's there's so many nuggets in what you shared that in life you don't get what you want. You get a complete match to who you are. And yeah. just like in the matrix, whatever whatever the code is that is happening within your mind and your body, you are going to get a match, an energetic reflection of that in your external reality. No matter what you say you want, if you're not believing it, if that's not your actual constitution, then that's not going to be a match to your reality. So still having those insights, somehow, in some way, you still ended up in prison. How the- No, the prison, the prison was before that. Before that. So yeah. I want to touch on that story okay, because I it. think it's also really important how the mindset turns into this. Um, because you had this insight while in there and I'll, yeah. share, I'll let you share the story because it, it ties in really nicely. Yeah. So, you know, there was, there was a lot I brushed over, yeah. but, um, when I left, when I left, um, modeling, I cause it was modeling from 2000, from the year 2000, 2001 and 2002. And I was on billboards. I was in L'Oreal commercial. I was Beyonce's lover, in, in the Destiny's Child jumping, jumping video. I was in the Faith Evans, I love you video. And there was just this energy about it. I would barely even go on auditions and I would get these direct bookings. And there was a, there was an energy about myself where I felt connected to something other than just Garen. But you can't see the picture while you're in the frame. And it was all while I was reading a book called The Power of Positive Thinking that talks about, you know, personal optimization, letting go of, um, uh, resentment, being able to forgive, all those things. So just by reading, without trying to do the work, just reading was having me do the work and it was causing me to emanate a completely different frequency. So here I am doing that. Stop reading the book, not knowing that when you stop learning, you just go back to whatever your old state was. Because weeds don't need anything to grow but time. Mm. And so the weeds of my past said, hey, remember me? I come to overtake the garden. So when I left music, I mean, when I left uh, modeling, I'm like, yo, I was, in the, I was in the height. So with billboards in Times Square, dating <sighs> Miss France, I'm not going to put her out there, but one of the Miss Frances, uh, dating Miss France at the time, go out to France, and then all of a sudden, I meet these guys who offer me an opportunity to make money same day. And I've never made right away money. Thank you to my mom for when I was a little kid who would never give me money. She said, whenever you can make your own money, you can buy whatever you want. So I never was taught how to make money. It was whenever you can make your own money, however you make it. This is how I internalize it. So somebody offered me an opportunity to drive cars over borders and make 4,000 pounds, which a pound at that time was 2.3 US dollars. So it was close to $9,000, same day, cash. So I drove a car over a border and I was like, that was the easiest driving from the UK over the ferry to Rotterdam, which was like, I was you going to give me this money for doing this? This is easy. I do that route in the next two months, seven times. The eighth time I flew into France, everything felt wrong, got met at the border at the UK, and I got caught. And it ended up being 6.2 kilos of heroin. The most anti-drug person you will ever meet who had never had a sip of alcohol in his life, the cleanest person, is now busted for smuggling drugs while having commercials, music videos, big billboards in Times Square simultaneously. And I'm like, what the fuck did I just do? So I get to prison. I'm in there for a whole year. It's not designed the way um, America is. You're in there for a whole year before you get sentenced. So I'm, I didn't get my first call until after a year. People get their first calls like same day, same two days. One year. And this is one year after my daughter was born. I just had a daughter. Wow. So all this was going on. And I'm like, how did I get myself 
How could I have all of this and my greed and my ego and my selfishness then create all this? So it was a direct flip for where my life was. So I'm in prison for serving a 12-year sentence. And I got out in two and a half years, but how did I get out, Andre? Ask me. <laughs> Garen, how did you get out in two and a half years out of a 12-year sentence? There's several ways you could get out. You can be an informant. You can, you can snitch on somebody or a way I discovered. Or you could just try to escape. <laughs> you can, oh, the, the four ways. <laughs> try to escape or the way that I unconsciously discovered. I started reading this book. The Power of Positive Thinking. Seems like every time I read the book, The Power of Positive Thinking, it gets me into a state and whatever that frequency is creates miracles. Um, they're, allow, they're allowing us to watch um, Shawshank Redemption, or which is a, a, a movie once a month, but they were allowing us to watch that movie, which is a movie that's based out of prison. And Anthony Dufresne, which is Tim Robbins, he said, they can take anything they want away from me, but they can't take away my mind. And I don't know what it was about that phrase, but all of a sudden my mind goes, Poof. I know exactly why I'm in prison. Because when I was free, I used to always say, I feel like I'm so far away from where I'm supposed to be, like I'm in prison inside of my own body. And I was like, I put myself here because I would say it every day. But if I can think myself to prison, well, in that case, I'm a free man. And I just kept saying, I'm free, I'm free. What would a free person do? And the voice inside of me said, Garen, everything that you used to love to do as a kid that made you the most happy. And I'm like, what's that? What's... I still love to sing. I start singing. And it something filled me up. It was just the joy and the act and the art of singing. It, there was a sense of freedom. And I'm singing in prison. And an inmate goes, man, every time you sing, it makes me feel free. I was already free. So it was like he was benefiting from my overflow that I already had given to myself. Garen, you used to love to draw and paint. So I started drawing and painting. But like from the energy of the little kid, not adult doing it, from the energy of the little kid, I'm excited and I want to paint like this. And, and there's this joy that welled up painting portraits of other inmates' families and things. They're crying. And I'm like, there's something happening. I don't know what it is, but my brain is going like this. And there's something, there's this energy that's welling up. Then it's like, Garen, you love inspiring people. And all of a sudden, I'm learning French. And then I'm saying these different things in French. And people are like, oh, man, you're like, you're like, you're like guru, guru. They say you're a guru and you're, you're like a wizard. They're telling me this. And this is before I was in tuned with nature like I am now. Garen, run. You love to run. No, I'm literally arguing with the thing that's telling me to run. Why? Because outside nobody's running. I saw fights. I saw drug deals. I saw stabbings and everything. And a little voice, nobody's running, saying, Garen, run. So finally, one day I started running and I'm running. And all of a sudden, I feel the most potent of that energy just <sighs> overtake me. 30 days, there were 60 something inmates running with me. There was less fights, less drug deals, less stabbings. And I'm not aware of what's happening. And when I felt free, I want everybody to hear this. No president. No side, blue or red or whatever, can take away your freedom. Because in losing my freedom, my actual freedom, because I was in actual prison, I discovered my freedom. So nobody can take away what only you can give to yourself. So while I was in prison, far away, I felt free because I was doing all the stuff that brought the most joy to little Garen. And when I embodied the characteristics of freedom, magically, they called me out of nowhere. They'd already tested the drugs three times, 6.2 kilos of heroin. And then all of a sudden, my state changed. I am a free man. 
doesn't matter what's going on outside of me. I am free. Garen, we retested the drugs. 90% was fake. And for the amount that was real, you've already done the time. You're free to go home. Let that land. Because there's so much medicine inside of that. You don't have to have gone to prison like I did to be in prison inside of that job, inside of money, inside of sex, inside of a relationship you know you don't want to be in and you stay in it. That is prison, my friend. And I figured out a magic formula that I use today for any time I feel like I'm in this prison and I know what it feels like. I start tapping into little Garen and the joys that he has to offer to himself because it creates this energetic body that far supersedes his physical body. And what happened was just like a woman gets impregnated, the seed grows in the womb, it grows too big for the womb, and then what's eventually produced is birth called a baby. My womb was that prison. And then I was implanted in there. And my energetic body overflowed through me into the other inmates, which overflowed through them. And all of that energetic, that one mind body was too big for the space. So what was produced was free Garen. That was the next layer of birth. And all of this I was unaware of. (laughs) This is only connecting the dots looking backwards. So that's why I went up in modeling and then I went down. And then I get out. That's when I got the record deal. So everything that I was doing and who I was being caused the record deal to happen. With Ludacris, all of a sudden, I stopped doing all the principles and the practices. I stopped running and I stopped doing the things that brought me the most joy so that I can please everyone else and do what everybody else tells me I should do. Therefore, rejecting little Garen's wants and needs. And when I reject my wants and needs internally, The outside is the physical manifestation of what's going on inside. And so that's why the rise and fall. So the change your mindset, change your life led me to a personal development seminar. And they said, whenever you find a really good book and you keep and good things keep happening, that's a book that you keep in your corner for the rest of your life. And you just keep reading it. And I'm like, Oh, I read a good book and all this stuff would happen. And then I'd stop because I think I got it. And then ego would creep in. Yeah, I'm the man. And it's just as fast as it rose up was just as fast as it went down. Keep reading. Keep tending the garden so the weeds don't overtake it. So it's been 11 years. And I never stopped reading the book or books or learning, or evolving. I get the chills every time, bro. (laughs) It's it's so good. Thank you so much for sharing in that way, and the way that you shared. It's just so magnetic. Man, there's so many themes and beautiful nuggets that came from that. It's one thing to hear the cliche quotes that everybody hears, you know, as within, so without, and the law of attraction, and how manifestation is real. But when you have firsthand the visceral experience of connecting the dots, looking backwards from now, from now, but people that are listening to this podcast right now, wherever they're at in their life, it is a direct match to who you are. And I would love to dive deeper into the process of gaining awareness as to what that is. So you don't have to have these huge collisions in your life where you're smacked in the face by a cosmic two by four of like, holy shit, I'm so living out of alignment. I'm so not in my dharma that... Now I have this big course correct. Sometimes that's needed 
And in your case, it's created a beautiful story that has impacted millions of people. Mm -hmm. Um, But a lot of people like you spoke to, whether it's a job or relationship, there's these smaller prisons that we that we coincide in and that we get comfortable in and that we decorate to look all nice. But it's not freedom. And to settle for less than freedom is so sad because freedom is so good. Yeah. (laughs) And. Another thing that you touched on as well, just like how you are always a forever learner and mm-hmm. that this process of continually going on the journey of not thinking that you got it, because when you got it, then you're going to stay in that in that energy of who you have been. You got to keep gardening and, and protecting that. And I love that analogy of the weeds that will overtake if you just let time do its thing. So no matter how much work you do, I don't care how much of a master or guru you think you are. The moment you stop learning. They're like, why is this happening? I've already gotten my master's in spiritual psychology. I've done this. And why is this thing happening? Well, if you brushed your your teeth every day for 10 years and then you stopped for five days, why would the bacteria just come up? Because it's meant for you to actually practice the art of brushing teeth every day. Yeah. Taking a shower every day. Yeah. Cleansing your mind and renewing your mind every day. Yeah. It's beautiful. And there's, it's worth speaking into that there's so many modalities of what that means to learn and to honor self. It doesn't mm-hmm. necessarily just mean read a book or watch a documentary or listen to a podcast, but it could be giving yourself time, space, and nature and like allowing what naturally wants to arise come up, right? Like, yeah. Um, so, so beautiful, man. There's a lot of themes that we opened up that I want to touch on now. Okay. Okay. Let's so, do it. is there anything else that you want to share on the power of, how you are, we are all manifestors on a very real visceral level in our life and largely what we're unaware of, like the subconscious and how it operates in our life and creates our external reality without us really realizing what's happening. Is there anything that you want to share else on that topic before we move forward? There are two phrases that I often say is you can't change what you're not aware of. And even if there is change, you won't be able to articulate it. And if you can't articulate it, you can't teach it. And if you can't teach it, you don't experience exponential growth. And so you can't, one, you can't change what you're not aware of. And then two, you can't see the picture while you're in the frame. So having people in your life that don't just say yes Oh my God, you're so amazing, even when the shit's not amazing. Having actual people in your life that will stand for your higher self and hold accountable and hold the light, but also tell you when you're when you're off course, given your permission, of course, but I ask for it. I ask, I ask for, I don't call it feedback, but, but for feed forward, because a lot of times you can't see what other people see. That was something that early on I got, I leaned in and most people, they're afraid of feedback. They're like, oh, and he said this and he said that. Here's one thing I want to invite each and everybody out there. Every time you do a talk, every time you do a project, every time you do something where you're expressing yourself or you're showing yourself, ask for feedback, ask for feed forward. Because there will be some nuggets inside. And ask somebody who won't just like, just tickle your feathers. Like ask somebody who's like a straight up person. And don't be afraid of what they share because all it is is information that you can either do something with or not. I learned early on in my transformation, there were people that just stood for me and they stood for my higher self. And they were just, they, they held me into that. They were like, It didn't land for me. Okay, why didn't it land for you? And be really curious about your journey. It's like, okay, why why didn't this work? Why didn't this work for you? Most people don't want to hear that. So I just want to give people this is a this is one of my secret sauces. I will always ask ask for feedback. I will always ask the questions inside of the questions. And when somebody says, Oh my God, that 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 inspired me so much. Anybody who knows me, I'll always say, What exactly inspired you? And then when they share it, that's when you make a mental note because they're giving you a verbal reflection of what's inside of your picture that you may or may not be able to see. And the more and more of that you can get, the more and more you can see of yourself through other people's eyes that you trust. So beautiful. So beautiful, man. And I've also seen you, like the journey that you've been on 
and prioritizing your own self care. Like I've heard you say many times, like the health of the seed determines the fruit of the tree. Absolutely. You know, and it's so important to be cognizant and aware of what are those seeds that we're planting Mm -hmm. because that's going to turn into a fruit one day. And what fruits do you want to eat? 5, 10, 15, 30, 50 years from now. Yeah. And it's what you're selling right now is going to de- determine that. So how important is it and what does it actually look like for you to protect the health of that seed? Well, you know, the the saying that I said earlier is um, the outside is the physical manifestation. And just let those words land, land. The outside is the physical manifestation of what's going on inside the brain that's connected to the heart. That big old universe out there that you're like, oh my God, look at the galaxies and all the stars and wow, is a reflection of the world that's inside of you. So if you plant pumpkin seeds, you'll get a pumpkin. If you plant oak trees, you get an oak tree. Carrots, you'll get a carrot. You don't plant a carrot and get an oak tree. You don't plant pumpkin seeds and get a Ferrari. The seeds are your thoughts. The the seeds are your thoughts. And your feelings about your thoughts is the water and sunlight. Mm. And the feeling is the secret. That is what literally fertilizes the soil. So you can either put acid on the soil or you can put the, 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 the pesticides on the soil or you can put pro- proper water and sunlight. So your own self-belief, belief in yourself, love for yourself, gratitude for yourself and others is the nutrients that is needed to create fertile ground for the thoughts that you plant. And that seed is no different than your father impregnating your mother. If the environment is unfavorable, something will happen to that baby. So when you plant unhealthy thoughts and then you have unhealthy feelings and then you pull in other people to validate those unhealthy feelings, the baby that will be delivered will be, it would be a deformed baby. There will be something that happens to the the ripple effect of that thought, the ripple effect of the physical equivalent of the thought realized. So if you can understand how nature works, because we are human nature, and anything that's a part of nature benefits from its resources. So if you follow nature's flow and rhythm, your thoughts are seeds, and you start thinking happy, positive, joyful, loving, grateful, gratitude, zest, zeal, passionate, driven, inspirational, aspirational thoughts, and then feeling it, feeling the love, feeling the gratitude as if it were already here. Like really, as if it were already here. You plant that giant oak tree and you see the oak tree. Man, it's going to be an oak tree. It's going to be an oak tree. But you got to water it Mm -hmm. daily. The watering it daily is visualizing it daily, visualizing those thoughts daily. And this is what people do, not even realizing that they're creating the car crash, car crash, the, the, the breakup. They're creating the lack of, Abundance, that's the, the abundance frequency that allows the money to even want to come into your life. Most people don't even realize that because uh, when this bill comes, it's like, oh man, I got to pay these bills. And that bill is associated with money. And so you have issues with money, but you love nature. I want everybody to let this land. You have money problems. But you will go into nature and be like, oh, my God, I love these trees. Where do you think? What do you think creates money? Comes from bark. Bark creates paper. So whoever lied and said that money doesn't grow on trees, money is an actual, a factual tree. So if you treated that piece of paper 
the same way that you treated nature, you'd realize that you don't have money problems. You have a worthiness problem. And money is only matching whatever worthiness that you have inside of yourself. So if you feel yourself in nature and say that that's a match for how I feel about myself, then the money, that frequency, then just starts to match. So, so powerful. So powerful. So many things that you just touched on there, man. Um, Yeah. Earl Nightingale said the strangest secret is that man becomes what he thinks about most of the time. Mm -hmm. And the seeds that we're planting, oftentimes we're so impatient because we live in a society that romanticizes and gratifies instant gratification. We want the results right away. We plant the seed on Tuesday, Wednesday, we're digging it up to see if it sprouted or not. Why isn't it here? Exactly, you know? And patience is necessary along the process of it. You need to know what seed you want to plant first and foremost before you plant it, what is actually going to be worthwhile in your life 30 years from now, right? Don't just go planting seeds because you think it's a good idea. What actually do you want in your life? And there's so much value in sitting with yourself and choosing a direction because most people don't choose a direction. They just they just spontaneously go in the direction which is based off the memory they've accumulated in their life and what they believe is possible. I think I should be doing this because it sounds good. Exactly. Exactly. Not because it's actually what is going to bring me and the world life and it's what the world needs and what fills me up. So I just love what you're speaking to of getting clear on what those seeds are. And just it's so important to have patience because it takes time. And there's moments where, holy shit, a lot happens in one moment, mm-hmm. right? You have those like big peak experiences or moments where it feels like overnight some a big connection happened or a big opportunity came through, but that's a byproduct of giving the, the seed the right environment and sunlight and water over a period of time Absolutely. and having that, yeah. that feeling. So good. It, it is when those things happen all at once, then they start looking, okay, what am I doing now? And then they do more of what they're doing now, not realizing those results came from seeds that you plant six months ago. Yeah. So maybe go back and see the series of rituals that you were doing six to eight months ago in a consistent way, you're like, oh my God, I planted this and then I did this and then I got on the call then I went to church and then I prayed and then I meditated and I was doing this and I came up with this idea and I wrote this in my journal. Like it's all right here. Someone the other day was like, oh, Garen, that's easy for you to say. You got you got the car, you got the money and all this stuff. It's easy for you to say. I'm like, motherfucker. <laughs> I've been saying this shit since 2009 when I was $200,000 in debt. Had 125 videos on YouTube from my storage unit. Sleeping on bubble wrap. Sleeping, sleeping. Um, I was in, a, in an ab- in abandoned building. It didn't make sense to my current life, but there was something inside of me that needed to come out. Y'all are just catching up. You think that what's happening now is something? This was from back then. Yeah. Wait till you see 10 years from now <laughs> from what I'm creating now, yeah. what I'm used to be creating now. Yeah. You just wait. Mm. And they're like, oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, you're waiting for someone to discover you and you're waiting for this and you're like, and I'm waiting for the right time and I'm waiting for this thing and I'm waiting for this thing. I had 125 videos from my storage unit and it was titled The Storage because it was great lighting. It was all white. It was like the best lighting. They're like, oh my God, you got the best lighting. Crazy, right? Yeah. Insane, man. And I just put myself out there and there was a this energy that just wanted to come out. So without trying to get it perfect or right or edit or anything, just put it out. Yeah. It's powerful, man. It's it's like you'll see it when you when you believe it. And for a lot of people, they're operating the other way around. You know, they'll believe it when they see it and it happens in the reality. But the truth is you're to get something you've never got, you, you're going to have to do something you've never done and be someone you've never been. And a lot of times uh, we get stuck in the loops and unfortunately the comfort of the people we're surrounded with. So I think it's really it's so important to just 
guard the environment of that seed. And a lot of that looks like just the information that you're taking around, you know, like the people that you're hanging around yeah. and the information through technology and social media, all that noise that is not supporting you on your path is just really important to be mindful of. Yeah. Mm. So good, man. There's so many things I want to continue to dive into here though. Um, yeah. Wow. So deep breath for everybody that's been listening. This like this is uh this is a very inspiring and motivation motivational for me. Um and so just thank you. Thank you mm, for sharing. You're welcome. I really brother. appreciate it. It seems like as we go on this journey and we dive deeper and deeper into what we're creating and what really lights us up, it's going back into that two, four, six, eight-year-old Garen that has this inner natural artistic, creative expression that naturally springs out of you, you know, and how, how important and how tied do you feel the inner artist is, is with the inner child? Well, the artist is, um, the little kid before life, life juice. So before your parents influence, before society's influence, and there's like, there's a, there's an original energy that you come here with. And, you know, little kids, baby, they're the clo- they're the they're the closest to spirit. They're way they're the closest to nature. They're, they're fresh out of the womb, and then all of a sudden they get imprinted on. But there's a specific power, and if you notice how kids is from age to seven, that's where they grow the most. Adults are deteriorated children. So if you could find a way to tap into the origination of that power. Is it possible that you could tap into the power that is of creation, that is connected to our ancestral lineage, that is connected to ancient coding and and all of creation? Babies are born from creation. And so I was in a deep meditation and I just found myself saying, I've created all of this stuff but something's missing. I know nobody has truly got a chance to experience the real me. They they experience partial me, overcompensation me, or me that's trying to prove myself so that I can be seen by a specific um, avatar or something, whatever the coding is. Nobody really experienced the real me. And I've always known the real me was really magical. But I didn't know, nor did I feel safe to express it, that version. Why? Because rejection, still for me, all these different things, it's not safe. Judgment, it's not safe. I'm in this deep meditation, and then I said, I'm going to try something different. My intention is to be an open vessel for my ancestors to communicate a message through me for who I'm supposed to be for humanity. Mm. Just that, pause right there, that bro. Was that was my intention. That is such a powerful intention that I think we can all sit with. So good. Yeah. And what came from that? Who am I, the, 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 the vessel to communicate a message for my ancestors to communicate a message through me for who I am to be for humanity. And about 20 minutes later, a little uh, of the, it was revealed to me, Garen, I want you to look back at all the things no one ever taught you, but you just knew how to do. And every time you would do it, good things would happen. So I look back when I was doing modeling, and then after I modeled, they hired me to work and, and, and teach guys and girls how to walk the runway. The result of that was they were more confident, fully expressed, embodied, and they were taking more risks. Then they hired me uh, at a modeling agency to work with the new faces at LA Models to work with the new faces, ages 13 to 18, people who are uncomfortable on camera, uh, didn't, you know, they're just like uncomfortable in their own body. So I do a six hour workshop. Nobody taught me how to do this stuff. Six hour workshop, 40 models. By the time we were done, there's parents that were like, what did you do with my daughter? I've never seen her this more, this confident. Wow, she's so, she's expressing herself in ways she's never done it. 
They were more confident, more fully expressed, more embodied, taking more risks. I had a speech impediment all through elementary, high school, middle school. And I was diagnosed with special education. I was in special education classes. Then I went on to speak in 72 countries all over the world. And then I created Speakers Academy and Speakers Bootcamp. And I taught a bunch of people how to do embodied speaking where you actually evoke the people. There's not a lot of teaching. There's people that speak from cue cards, and but they don't have the confidence to walk into any room in front of anyone and be who they naturally are. And by the time I was done with them, they were more confident, more self-expressed, taking more risk and more embodied. So all of this is coming in the meditation. They say, Garen, you'll be at a party. Somebody will ask you, what do you do? And you'll say, I'm a transformation coach. And all of a sudden, you'll just feel this energy. And you'll just start singing or you'll start drumming. Next thing you know, there's 300 people dancing. They say, Garen, lead with the artist and then take them to transformation. And I was like, oh, the artist is little Garen who just simply wants to express himself. And that artist wakes up all the other artists because you can't be what you can't see. So when somebody embodies the essence of freedom, it gives other people permission. And I said, I got it. I accept. And then all of a sudden, awaken the artist within just drops into my consciousness. You're going to create this retreat and you're going to attract some really extremely powerful people that all want that same thing. They don't want to overcompensate. They don't want to prove a point. They're tired, Garen. And you have unlimited amount of energy and you know how to teach them how to tap into that well. So you're going to teach them how to tap into their true artist. And then they'll go out into the world, into their work, and they have a sense of renewal like they've never experienced before in their life. Garen, this is what you're here to bring the people create awaken the artist within two weeks completely filled up and i was like yo where are these people coming from all i had to do was create it mastermind filled up where are these people come from big name people other people they're just, they're just coming in the bunches another retreat sold out leadership uh um uh, uh, artist power leadership program for high level, six and seven figure earners. Bam, bam. Garen, I see the way you coach. I see the way you lead other leaders who create other leaders. That sustainability that your businesses have, the way that you, your intuition, the way that you coach, the way that you facilitate, there's something else. And I want to learn that something else. So all of this came through five months ago. The company is already at past seven figures. And I wasn't even trying to do that. But what little Garen was ultimately saying is, I have something to say. And no matter what anybody says, I'm going to say it and I'm going to share it. Can't say the wrong thing to the right person. And he's in full ownership over his true dharma and his true mission and his true purpose. And he's not veering off anymore Mm. so powerful what message do you have for people that want to awaken their own artist within imagine a little kid tapping at your knees going mom 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 dad 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 listen to me please listen to me listen to me and imagine you ignoring that child for 20 years imagine what the relationship would be like those things that you used to love to do as a little kid that you've abandoned. There's a little kid inside of you and every day that goes by is going, mom, 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 dad, dad. And it produces in your spirit the same thing in the relationship to your physical and spiritual self as it would a physical kid if you don't nurse that relationship. So whatever you loved to do as a child, 
that brought you the most joy, whether it was playing in the sand, playing in the rain, looking up at the stars, drawing, singing, dancing, uh, play fighting, um, imagine, imagine the kind of houses that you want. It's not for a job purpose. It's for your soul's purpose so that your heart can be coherent with itself. And then when you tap into the frequency of the heart, which is one of the most powerful frequencies in the world, it will respond. And it will respond in a way that creates a sense of magic that doesn't make sense to the human psyche. This is my message for each and every one of you, that you're all artists deep down inside. And he and she, and they are telling you, come home, please because I want to play with you and I have so much to share. Mm. So beautiful, man. We, we need more people that can unlock this within them and not just for what it can do for the world, but on an individual level, the amount of freedom that we discover when you tap back into that, we live in such a culture that is so focused on results <sighs> and having time spent without trying to get a result, but just be and be an expression to what's most alive within you. So much beautiful, so many beautiful things can come from that. And I love that visual that you gave of like that child tapping on his parents' knee because what kind of relationship with trust would be developed after 20 years of not listening or not paying attention to that child? It's not going to come back online right away. That relationship no. needs to be fostered. You've got to immerse yourself. Like when I didn't have a relationship with my firstborn daughter and I finally came back into her life. And even when she told me not to, not to call her, I showed up. And even when she told me to go away, I still kept showing up and I kept showing up and I kept showing up. And after two straight years, she finally picked up the phone. I said, hello, how are you? Fine. Does the same thing with your spirit, brother. Mm -hmm. You don't get access to universal secrets and ancient truths, you can by reading a book, but that's the surface access. There is an internal, when you connect yourself with nature's deepest roots, you don't get access to that without deep trust. And if you don't have deep trust, then you'll always be operating from surface level magic. Mm. It doesn't really move the needle. You sound intelligent, but you're not moving with life's intelligence. Ooh, okay, Andre. <laughs> yeah, that's dope. You sound intelligent, but you're not moving with life's intelligence. Yeah. You're not plugged into nature's resources. Yeah. You're plugged into your own narrative. Yeah. So whatever that is, is actually repelling you from what really wants to be in your life. What is your birthright? 400,000 people had to die just for you to be here. That's all your ancestors coded inside of your DNA. You don't think that all of their magic and all of their gifts don't live inside of you? Yes, they do. Now, will the real you stand up and give you the real you a chance so that you can gain access Having a pass and a VIP is one thing, but access is a whole nother can. Gaining access, you will never feel like you're, in a, like you're alone in a room where there's no physical people there. Mm. Mic drop moment. <laughs> so good, man. And it's our responsibility. Like for whoever is listening to this right now, it's, it's your responsibility to make this a living reality in your life. Yeah. To take the actions, to do what's necessary, no matter how difficult your situation is, wherever you're at in life, whatever difficulties you're currently facing, it's there. And it's great that it's there because it doesn't mean you have to go chase it outside of yourself. It's in here. So yeah. it will be with you and you can access it at any time in your life. But what are we waiting for? You're waiting for yourself. 
Because what you're looking for inside of that man, inside of that woman, inside of that money, inside of that sex, inside of that job, is you trying to fulfill yourself. Wherever you go, you still got to take yourself with you. You ain't going to find it out there. So uh, I invite all of us to dive in and we start just simple. This week, actually, as soon as you hear this, what is the one thing that as soon as you think about your childhood, you're like, man, when I used to do this, it made me so happy. All you busy bee workers out there doing all the stuff and work, 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 work. How can you ever have the time if you never make time? Give yourself one hour a week and sign up for the course, sign up for the dance class, sign up for the art class, go play in the rain, go just jump in a lake, go whatever the thing is, Mm. but don't allow the adult to do it. Imagine yourself inside of the kid, the joy of that kid, and then take that kid out there and have yourself an artist date and take that kid out there once a week for one hour. And then I want you to come back to Andre and myself 90 days from now and share with us how exhilarating your life is. Mm, Please do. That would be so nourishing for us on on many levels to to hear that reflection. And um, it's a powerful invitation. An intention that we had going into this podcast, you mentioned last night, is we're going to do Tony Robbins meets Harry Potter. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like we're doing a great job. So yeah. Just a shout out. So there's like, there's like this <laughs> mystical magic and then there's like this, you know, self-development, but it's like the weaving and the dance of actually the magic that lives inside of all of us. Absolutely. So why not play with it? Here for it. Yeah, bro. So good, man. Mm-hmm. Be- uh, it's because it's present. We got to touch on it, man. Um, there's been so many beautiful chapters throughout this whole podcast. Last night we had a powerful men's group yeah. here at the house. Mm-hmm. Organized a mastermind, invited, there was nine of us, um, all successful individuals in their 20s, 30s, early 40s, creating big things in the planet, but heart-centered, yeah. going through various themes and challenges in their lives. And it was so powerful, man. It's so powerful. And I know you've been doing men's work for a while also yeah. mm-hmm. in your hometown or where you live. And I just think it's so important, important, needed, yet not explored very often. Yeah. And so why do you feel like the men's work and men needing men is such an important thing in this day and age. Because we were raised to not have to need that. I got it. No, I got it. Man up, man this. And you, and we were raised in a society that teaches that we want to know why there's more suicide rate. There's more porn addiction. There's more depression than any other species on the planet. But yet, we don't have any safe spaces to actually even have the awareness or the beginning of the conversation of a man saying, I love you, I see you. Why? Because that's not man enough. That's not, that's not a man thing. Vulnerability is weak. Well, I want to just share with you something. Me as a man, the most powerful thing I ever did was be vulnerable. And the first message I ever got with somebody said, when you shared your testimony, I put the gun down. When you shared your testimony, fifth message I got, I didn't drive my car off a bridge. You gonna call that weak? No, that's not weak. The courage it takes to be yourself. Men out there, they don't share their feelings. So they bottle it up and then they take it out on certain people and they take it out on the work. They take it out on themselves. They take it out on the alcohol because there are no healthy outlets. So men's work is important because probably for the first time in my lifetime, men are waking up and saying, hold on, wait a second. Whatever matrix was that I was domesticated with Maybe, maybe that ain't it because my friends are dying left and right. Let me copy what my wife is doing. She has her women's groups and things like that, and they talk about all the stuff. So having other healthy men to be and create a safe space for you to share the real stuff, your real feelings, 
and and they have some something similar and they're sharing back and forth there's a sense of ease that goes inside of your nervous system so last night what you were able to create andre was for nine high powered men to have a safe space not to talk about their business but to talk about what's behind the scenes that they never talk about. And that's what starts the healing in man. That's what starts the healing of the part of the world that they're trying to get rid of. They're really trying to get rid of men, masculine men. That is a narrative that is happening right now. Getting rid of our tribal nature, really. And the only person that can truly have our backs in this way is other men. And so inside of that container, I realized my role is to lead leaders, lead the, some of the most powerful leaders in the world. And I fully accept that role because I've been all of those things. So if I can hold space, that deep space for so many different pains, tears, that level of vulnerability, aches, stress, depression, and just hold a safe container and then share little things I've learned along the way. Well, then I'm doing my part in healing the planet on this end. Mm. And so are you, brother. Mm. So good, so powerful, so needed. And for individuals that don't feel like they have that support system, where where does somebody go? Because I I mean, this is the first time I've done it in this format and it yeah. was so profound. And to see the tears shed and the healing that happened and to see individuals that have so much success, external resources, connections, power externally, but no, it doesn't matter what you have outside of yourself. If you're not reconciling what's deep within, it's going to, you're going, it's effectively going to lead to the same experience of your life, no matter yeah. what it is. If you have all this at the expense of not having all this, you actually have a mirage. You don't have all of this. Mm -hmm. And so... If it's not in person, some of my greatest relationships with people who I've never met before were online. You're online anyways. You're Googling and scrolling and doing all this stuff anyways. Look up men's work. Look up a men's community. Look up Andre's community. Look up my community, Empowered Brotherhood in Austin. Like, they're actually all over the place because there's more men that realize they need more men. My marriage is better because I'm in, I'm, 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 I have my tribe of men so that I can release all this stuff with them. And then my wife was like, cause when you come home, I actually get, I get all of you and not all of this other extra stuff that I've gotten the opportunity to release with, with the, the men that I'm connected with. So you can go online, you can look up online, you can, there's, there's so many people that are hosting these men's gatherings and you can look, man. You can just look up men's gatherings in my area. It will show you 20 different, 20 different things. Mm -hmm. Andre's doing stuff. I'm doing stuff. Um, and I will tell you this. Life cannot deny someone who gives their absolute off. It's something that you know that you need. The same research that you did in figuring out what kind of president you're going to vote for, the same research that you did in, in figuring out where this girl is going to be at this, this next club and figuring out what kind of clothes you're going to wear, I dare you to put that into something that you know your soul needs right now. I dare you, instead of having a, a flag out front that says, oh, this president 2024 I dare you to put me 2024 as a flag, us 2024. I dare you to do it and start researching yourself and aligning yourself with other people who are doing that and then see what we do as a population and as a humanity. 
Man, my uh, my cup is full. This podcast has been so so inspiring and so nourishing mm. for me, man. Just thank you for who you are. Period. Really see you and in, in the way that you're showing up in the planet and as a byproduct of going through all the tough shit that you've gone in your life, that has then become the fertilizer for you to go out there and really be able to support people and leaders in a really powerful way because it doesn't phase you because you've been there. You know how the story ends. Yeah. And uh, and it's just so exciting, man. I just can't even imagine where you're going to be five, 10 years from now in, in the lives of your art. You know, Let's be freaking go, Andre, because we go. go be in the same frequency. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. And thank you for your, your bravery to create um, a platform like this so that um, vessels like mine can be witness. And thank you for being able to have the eyes and the insight to be able to see it and articulate it because it's people like you that... Um, give our next generation hope. So I appreciate you, brother. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you deeply. Before we start to wrap up, man, would you sing for us? Because <laughs> uh, we're talking about all this inner artist healing. You're such a profound, playful child in an adult human body and mm -hmm. so talented in so many ways. Do you want to share a song or share anything with us in that? Yeah, I'll, I'll take y'all on, on a quick journey. Yeah, let's do I it. I want everybody to close their eyes. All right. Oh now, oh now, oh now, 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 oh now, oh now, oh now, 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 oh, 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 oh. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, man. What a note to end on. Thank you so much. You're so deep, welcome. Deep bow. Mm -hmm. For everybody that's listening, everything uh, is going to be linked down in the description where you can find Garen on Instagram. And for the upcoming retreats that you have, is there anything else that you want to share, bro, where people can find you? Uh, I studied to be a samurai for two years. And I would always ask my master questions and he would say stop take a deep breath you know what to do stop take a deep breath you know what to do with your infidelity with your health with that project with the unwritten book with the courage you need to ask that girl or guy out, with the courage you need to break up, leave, leave that job, pursue that offering, put the thing out. You know what to do. Aho. Aho. Thank you for everybody who's been tuning in. Until next time, be well.